Hello, I am Maria. I'm, I am developer of uh, BERT, which is why there is that subtitle. Um, uh, BERT is a routing software. Uh, I'm from Czechia and I have a, a weird accent, so sorry if you don't understand me, I will try my best. Um, and you are most of you are sleeping, so let's spot a difference. Let's play a little game. Who sees a difference? Yeah, just shout it. Yeah, and it's the 48th bit of the of the prefix. So what we can do with this? Yeah, we can join these two prefixes into one slash 47 and it will do the same. Something a bit more complicated. Well, you can probably see it. The third one has a different next hop and all of those prefixes differ only in last three bits. The first 45 bits are the same, and the last three are differing. They are going from 0 to 7. So what we can do with this? We can cover this by one route for the common next hops, and another one, another route for that one prefix which is differing. And we have reduced number of prefixes, in the first case from 2 to 1, in this case from 8 to 2. For this, there is a static algorithm, which means you take the whole routing table, pass it through the algorithm and it spits out another routing table, which does completely the same, it's completely equivalent, it doesn't lose anything, it doesn't misroute anything, it's just less number of routes, and it it's proven that it's optimal. There is a dynamic which is almost optimal, but almost optimal means that you could reduce the number of prefixes even more, but it's just not worth it, but it still does not misroute anything. Everything is routed correctly, it's just reducing the size by compressing prefixes which are, doing this, uh, which have, which are having the same next hop. What could be done with this? Well, if somebody um, accidentally mispropagates a million slash 84 slash 48s, you can just aggregate those back and you save your big A6 or TCAMs from overflow. Also, you can effic more efficiently use, if you are having like microtic, microtic things, you can more efficiently use these smaller TCAMs which are, uh, uh, there is uh, the, uh, the usage of those is like they find out which, uh, which prefixes are used the most and these are fed into the TCAM and uh, the others are routed by the CPU. So if you wanna uh, make your routing faster, make your forwarding faster, you can do some aggregation and find uh, have more uh, more covering more uh, more, uh, more have shorter prefixes. So once uh, once it was on Christmas, it was twenty fifth of, of December. I got nerd sniped. I wrote in three hours a code which did the aggregation. After one of my colleagues was uh, already implementing it at C, but I was quite. Uh, I got uh, uh, I got uh, nerd sniped into writing this into Python, in Python, and I wrote it completely standalone. And I found out after trying this on uh, one dump that IPv6 can be aggregated to something between fifty and fifty thousand to one hundred thousand prefixes. Now you you remember there is like like two hundred thousand. IPv4 could be aggregated to something between one hundred thousand and quarter million. It actually depends on how many next hops you are having from your machine. So if you are having two next hops, you are getting, if you are having only two uplinks, or one uplink, one, uh, well, two uplinks and one downlink, your, your one network, you are having, uh, you are going to those lower values, like 100,000 routes for IPv4, uh, uh, or 50,000 rounds uh, for IPv6. 
if you are having uh, 1,000 peers, like if you are sitting in DKIX or in uh, in Brazil, uh, in Sao Paulo, uh, you are uh, getting much more next hops, but it still gets quite low. You are typically not getting over over quarter a million in your IPv4, except uh, except for situations where your upstream is giving you uh, a, an incomplete uh, routing table. In these cases, uh, you actually get a bit bigger uh, IPv4 because um, when they give you lesser amount of, of routes, it actually makes the aggregability worse. At least this is what uh, I got from some volunteer. Uh, well, after writing this, I put a tweet on uh, on Twitter, for uh, for specific reasons, I won't tell. Uh, I won't use the uh, new name of the of the network. Ask me in. Ask me there. Uh, then why? Um, anyway, uh, some uh, people, some companies voluntarily contributed. Uh, basically, what's shown in uh, IP IP uh, uh, writing, uh, writing IPR into the command line. Uh, so just prefixes and their next hops and I did the aggregation for several different different situations um, also see that Nick contributed so I used those as the as the example here um, for IPv6 we have uh, many points of presence I took London and Frankfurt and both of those aggregated uh, to like a third from 200,000 uh, 200, to 65,000. Among those, like 50,000 prefixes were kept intact. These were the same in the original set and in the in the uh, in the compressed set. The the remainder got compressed into 15,000 routes. So we kept 50,000 uh, prefixes intact. And other 150,000 were compressed to uh, by 90 percent. And I did the same in Frankfurt. It got uh, somehow the almost the same result. But if compared the two results, like 15 percent of the whole result was different between London and Frankfurt. This is some. This is showing probably what I am interpreting it. That uh, the that actually uh, we can compress uh, routes coming from different directions if they are far enough, uh, you can see them as one uh, as one direction. If you are sitting in South Africa and you are trying to connect to US, uh, the distance is the distance is so long and there is so there is not en not enough lines to just. Uh, Put the data through through different uh, through different lines, so you probably get different. Uh, you probably can more aggregate more the American prefixes and less, for example, the African ones. Uh, in IPv4, uh, it it went to like two hundred thousand, um, and here you can also see the data. Uh, uh, here the, the location dependent part is a bit bigger. Don't know why. It would need much more, much more, uh, much more research. What to do next? We'd like to have much more data. We have just a little bit. I did fast research. No, nothing, nothing really big. But everything what I did, what I got was quite the same. It, all, all of that was aggregating down to those numbers I was I, sh I showed. Um, what we also want is to check actual forwarding performance, whether it makes a difference, whether you feed your your ASIC your TCAM with uh, a million routes or two hundred thousand routes. We also have to finish the implementation in BERT to make it uh, like commercially available, and we'd like to test whether it's possible to uh, aggregate on route reflectors to feed your internal network network routers with an aggregated table. Also, I have some provocative questions. Is it OK to route support the melee, and when? And if yes, 
which prefixes should we divert which prefixes should go uh, the uh, should go uh, the worst path are we going to uh, hit some routing loops when this this is possible or at least if we consistently degrade the uh, the routes on route reflector so all your network is uh, uh, is misrouting the same way does it is it su sufficient or do we uh, do we get some routing loops outside i don't know i was not researching that this but well or we could uh, we could aim for less scattered assignments we could look uh, whether uh, whether the the ip prefixes couldn't be swapped between actors between companies to actually uh, be joined to to bigger uh, bigger bunches or should we use blockchain well yes now to um uh, two slides of uh, of credits these uh, provided data thank you thank you a lot uh, without having your data i couldn't have any i couldn't have uh, any research thank you and i was consulting the topic with uh, various people notably i should say igor is the that person who is implementing the uh, the feature in bird and i'd like to thank him that he is uh, he is doing it uh, uh, he is doing it well um and also there is my there is a link to my twitter so you can follow me yeah and that's it any questions hey warren kamari google could you go back to slide four slide four yes and while you're doing that i mean i say mentioned this seems great for doing stuff like programming a fib uh maybe this slide one three or slide five i don't remember which this is like yeah, three. um so using this to program a fib or asic or something seems great but then towards the end you mentioned something like aggregating at a route reflector or something the bit i don't get is what happens if you do this and then you lose like 2001 blah 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 dadc colon colon 48 if that disappears, you suddenly have to take the route that you've aggregated, de-aggregate it, announce two routes. Like this potentially ends in a bunch of churn or similar as, you know, when you get a hole in your aggregation. Yeah. Um, the thing is, uh, um, the, uh, the, the algorithm is uh, quite stable. It doesn't make big churns if uh, one route disappears or reappears. Um, uh, it should uh, basically do, do not not more than uh, uh, than like two or three announcements if you get uh, if you get one update. But I have to check it uh, check it once again whether there is whether it's really clean. But uh, yeah, this is a risk, and uh, we should do proper assessment whether the risk is is worth it. Uh, for now. Um, we are expecting that the churns would not be such of an impact that well we could do if we do the the aggregation consistently on route reflector uh, then well if you don't if you have uh, many devices in your network it's uh, probably still better to do the uh, to do several churns several spikes in the in the routing traffic um then to like have to get rid of those of those devices because they don't have uh, the complete uh, they don't have the capability to uh, digest the complete table yeah no more questions fine thank you <laughs>